rotates. 360 degrees. Ha ha. 360 degrees. Ha ha. 306. 306. 360 degrees. Ha ha. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Full Circle, your cultural affairs radio magazine produced by members of the KPFA First Voice Apprenticeship Program, broadcasting from right here in Huchin, occupied Ohlone territory, also known to settlers as Berkeley. Tonight, as we speak, there are activists and community members camped outside, occupying the grounds outside of the Antioch Police Department. It started with the launch of a hunger strike last Friday. On tonight's show, we'll hear from the hunger strikers themselves and learn what drove them to take this historic and dramatic action and their future plans. And part of those plans include an upcoming march and rally in the city of Antioch tomorrow. We will give you details on that. All that tonight on Full Circle. I am your host, Freewill and Franklin. Keep it locked right here to Full Circle on KPFA. And again, welcome to Full Circle, the weekly show produced by apprentices of the First Voice Apprenticeship Program. I am your host tonight, Freewill and Franklin. And as I said in the opening, there have been protesters outside the Antioch Police Department since last Friday evening when they kicked off a hunger strike to bring attention to current APD hiring policies and also unacceptable behavior by leaders within the department. The hunger strikers came with three demands. One, they want the city of Antioch to immediately fire the killer cop officer Michael Malone In 2016, Officer Malone was responsible for violating his own department policies and procedures as a member of the San Francisco Police Department. Those violations led to the death of Luis Gongora Pat. For his violation, San Francisco made the historic decision to discipline Officer Malone with a suspension. But the day before the punishment was to be enacted, Officer Malone resigned his position which resulted in him never facing the consequences of his actions. He was then immediately hired here in the city of Antioch, where he was once already employed. Antioch Police Chief Tammany Brooks says he stands behind that decision. The hunger strikers' second demand is that Officer Stephen Aiello, the president of the Antioch Police Officers Association, stepped down as president after he was caught on social media inciting violence against protesters, saying it was 100% justified to slap a woman in the face if she flipped off the police at a protest. And their third demand is that community activists and those impacted by police violence have a seat at the table of the upcoming Bridging the Gap conversation on police reform being organized by the Antioch City Council. Let's check out this first report that covers day one and two of the six forced to strike hunger strike outside the Antioch Police Department. My name is Lacey Brown. I'm the president of Justice Advocates and Resources, and I'm a resident and mother here in Antioch, California. I am out here because the citizens of Antioch, like me, thousands of us, do not want Michael Malone here on the Antioch Police Force. We feel that we have exhausted every option, every everything that we can possibly do. We've submitted public comments to the city council meetings. We've sat outside city hall. We've protested in the streets. We've gone to the mayor's place of work and the chief of police and our city officials haven't heard us and it feels like they don't care what we have to say. So we feel like we need to escalate our action here to make sure that Michael Malone is removed from the Antioch Police Department. And we are willing to strike out here at the police department building until until they remove him. My name is McKenna Peterson. I am 24 years old. I'm out here in Antioch participating in a hunger strike because I believe in the value and importance of contributing and dedicating mind, body, and spirit in the fight for justice. I think it takes more than just words to accomplish what we need to accomplish. I think 
in America, we have systems that are so deeply rooted in abuse and deeply rooted in systemic and purposeful injustice that's going to take a lot of investment of our time and our physical bodies to accomplish healing and to accomplish the justice that's needed to overcome those systems. So that's why I'm out here and that's why I'm dedicating time and energy towards this fight. My name is Shikufa Khan and I'm a lifelong resident here in the city of Antioch. I'm a community organizer and I am someone who is fighting for the end of police brutality. I have organized protests. I have worked with community members. I'm a part of a organization, local nonprofit called Justice Advocates and Resources. And we're here for accountability to happen within our city, within the police department, within the school board, within the city council. And it's just, we're tired of the police brutality that is happening within our city. And we are not going to stop until the removal of Officer Maloney, who had killed an innocent homeless man, as well as the termination of Stephen Aiello, who is the police president union for stating remarks about slapping a protester in the face on social media. So we are here in demand of changes and we will not leave the Antioch Police Department until those changes are met. My name is Maria Brown. I'm here at Antioch Police Department on the a part of the hunger strike. I feel it's necessary for this radical action because city council members and officials have completely ignored um, taking accountability for what Officer Michael Malone and other Antioch police officers are doing to the community members. There are killer cops and I feel like they need to hear us. So we needed to take it to this extreme. Um, since been since 2016, they killed Luis Gorgona Pat and there's still been no justice or accountability. So this is very necessary and I'm here to support the community members of Antioch uh, since the city officials failed to do so. And I hope they see and hear us and want to talk about it. Michael James. I am a community activist here in the Bay Area. We're here today at the Hunger Shack, starting the Hunger Shack out here in Antioch PD to meet our demands. Police officers shouldn't be able to kill someone, have a lot of misconduct and not follow rules, and then be able to get transferred to another police department and not face any consequences. We're not going to leave until our demands are met. This can go on from one to two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. We are out here doing this. We have uh, the support of the Frisco Five. We have the support of the community. We have the support of the Luis Gangor uh, Pat's family as well. They are out here with us. My name is Michelle Permenter. Um, I got involved originally when I noticed how bad Antioch was. Um, I am a resident in Antioch. I've seen how the police department treats different demographics differently. Um, they definitely come out to rescue our white population way more than any other demographic that includes homeless, that includes people of color, that includes sexuality differences. But um, it's time to put an end to this. And when I found out that Malone was still on the police force after killing Luis and unfortunately torturing others um, in Antioch. It's definitely not a safe place where I feel comfortable at anymore. Um, I, being a person of color, I've always been skeptical of the police and what they have done. Um, I've had my personal accounts where police officers have come up to me um, just in a, not in the right way. And so that's why I'm here. I would definitely do want change to come. And that was the voices of the hunger strikers that are out here in front of the Antioch Police Department here at the corner of L Street and 4th Street in the city of Antioch. And the hunger strikers are just coming up. Uh, they just passed their first 24 hours. So I'm going to check in with them and see how they're feeling. Let's... um. Come on over here, and I'll start with uh, Shagufa Khan. You have just passed about 24 hours of not eating, and you're out here coming up on your second night outside. How are you feeling, like, physically and mentally? Uh, physically, um, it's I do have headaches. Um, I kind of do feel tired. However, uh, mentally, I feel strong. Um, you know, the demands are very reasonable of what we're demanding, and... I'm going to go at it till the end and, you know, going to keep fighting. And also sitting uh, down here doing some more sidewalk chalk art 
is Lacey. You haven't eaten in over 24 hours. Um, what's it like right now for you? Yeah, um, physically, I feel okay. Um, I don't think the real hunger has set in for us yet, honestly. Um, like like Shagufa said, we've had some headaches, but coffee has helped so far. Um, emotionally, I'm feeling motivated. We had um, a lot of community support today that was really encouraging, and we had a few um, you know, negative experiences as well, which was probably even more encouraging because it lets me know that we're out here doing the right thing. Um, and so it inspired me just to continue what we're doing and make sure that um, we don't give up and make sure that we still fight for what we're out here fighting for. And we just got two of the folks that have been um, away. So they're returning. And I'm just asking folks, how are you kind of feeling? You're on day two. You've been out here now. This is the second night. It, the sun has gone down. It's dark. It's cooling off. Um, but how are you feeling? You haven't had food in over 24 hours. You know, what are you feeling like emotionally, physically? Um, I think definitely the headache is the biggest thing physically. But I think emotionally, um, I tried to meditate. Uh, right before I left for a minute and that definitely helped bring my spirits up just kind of remembering to like center your mind in the reason why we're doing this it helps the body to move forward I think is what I've noticed and that definitely helped me continue on and feel a lot stronger physically even when I definitely put my mind in a better place and reminded myself that we're doing this for justice not just for right now but for the future and how this struggle is not only happening right now but it's happened in the past and kind of touching on the energy that all the momentum that's gotten, gotten us here to kind of push myself further and to mentally more prepare myself for the coming days that'll probably be worse. So I think this day has honestly been a great day. I feel very, uh, I feel very great about it. I feel good. I don't feel as bad as I did during when it was super hot. So the nighttime also helps us refuel. I'm really excited to get a good night's sleep and take it on tomorrow. Thank you. And that was the voice of McKenna. I didn't say her name at the beginning. And yes, the temperature today was probably near 105 and we are, you know, out in the sun. We have a couple of trees close by and um, some pop-up canopies. Uh, also joining us here, Michelle, she's also one of the um, hunger strikers. And we're just out here right now, quietly chilling. But you too, you're um, coming up on just passing 24 hours. You haven't eaten. You're just drinking liquids and stuff. What is it like for you right now? Your your emotions, your physical feeling, you know, what are you going through? Um, it's definitely getting tough, but um, I feel like that will go away with time. Um, just reminding myself why we're out here, why we're doing this for the community is really what's pushing me through. Um, anything other than that, I mean... Food is honestly on my mind all the time, but hopefully that will get easier um, as time goes on. But um, yeah, just staying positive is really what you have to do. Um, just not letting the negative Nancys get to you. So. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. And um, lastly here, how are you feeling, sir? Are you ready to uh, say something? Um, down here is Mike. He's part of East Bay Resistance. So how are you feeling, Mike? You're coming up on, um, you know, 30 Almost 40 hours. So how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm actually feeling pretty, I'm pretty much fine. Um, I'm feeling good. Energized. Coffee helped me. Um, but, you know, I'm in this, I'm in this until we seek justice for, you know, for Luis um, and for all the other victims of Officer Malone. Well, let's talk about, let's move back to Shagufa real quick and talk about um, the incident. First, we'll hear um, some sounds that they posted on Facebook of some people that drove by and decided that they weren't happy with what was happening out here. Let's check this out. We'll be right back. So just right now, a group of um, people in a car uh, came and literally threw eggs at us um, and, you know, slurred at us, told us to F off. And it hit him, unfortunately. Are you good? You're good. Awesome. <laughs> but yeah, do you see? I mean, we have community members who are just, you know, hating on what we're doing. It's crazy, but this won't stop us. We're going to continue our hunger strike. And that was some sound posted to the Facebook page of Shagufa Khan. And Shagufa, tell me how it felt when that happened. I was here on the scene when that happened. Unfortunately, we weren't rolling no tape, but 
Um, how does that make you feel just to hear that and to see that happen? Yeah, no, we were all just sitting, you know, chilling, vibing, and then we just hear those screeching tires, and someone said, go, 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 and we all turned around, and next thing you know we see is eggs being thrown at the ground, and then them cussing us out, and then after them just saying, okay, wow, ow, ow, let's go, let's go, and they just zoomed off with their li- uh, license plate being hidden or, like, covered with um, plastic or paper or whatnot. But honestly, it was a laughing matter for me. I'm just like, (laughs) they really had to go that far to, you know, throw eggs and, you know, hide their license plate and, you know, think that they're all that. But in reality, that just made us stronger. I'm like, hey, haters gonna hate. If we ain't doing anything right, we ain't doing nothing right, basically. (laughs) Um, And so... You know, I'm really, really happy um, that we stayed strong and we're going to continue this fight. And who gives a crap? Let them haters hate, you know, where we still have a huge amount of support um, of what we're doing. And everyone is asking how they can support and what they can do and who they can talk to. And here we are just sitting here at APD and, you know, fighting that good fight. And the egg incident wasn't the only thing that happened today. Let's take a quick listen to this sound um, also from social media about after some graffiti went up uh, with chalk on the walls at the police department, they were paid a visit by some officers. Let's um, hear this quick Facebook post and we'll be right back. All right, you guys, um, we got some cops in here. We got two. There's two more out here uh, just because we were, you know, uh, putting some chalk art on. So we have, you know, Officer Maloney has to go. Stephen Ayala must step down. Brooke stop hiring cooks and all of these types of stuff. Um, just, you know, chalk, it's washable. We got Black Lives Matter out there. And they had a whole bunch of cops coming out. Even the canine unit came out and they're like looking around um, our campsite. Taking pictures, too, I guess. But, yeah, we'll keep you guys updated. Um, We're going to stay out here until our demands are met. So, yeah. All right, yeah, that was some sound off of uh, Facebook, social media from the hunger strikers. The police came by and were intimidating people out here, taking pictures and doing stuff. Let's just go back to you, Shagufa, because I know um, you also posted that. I I think that was your video that we just played what did it uh, make you feel like to see the officers come out like that in force and you know they're big they're um you know in the way you know so what was you thinking when you saw them pull up on the street in the numbers that they did oh my god i was like one two three four five oh we got the canine out here too what like it was a lot of cops at once It's like they were waiting for us to do something so that they can all come in force saying that we were doing something bad when in reality, we are just peacefully protesting. Um, So my reaction was like, damn, there's a lot of freaking cops here. Like they were just waiting for us. Um, And when they came out, they were like, oh, you guys are, you know, making a mess and you're like graffiti all over. And I'm like, we're like, sir, it's it's chalk. You can remove it with water. And he was like, I don't know. And then he goes around and starts, you know, video recording us and taking pictures of us. And I'm like, hey, take my good side, you know, like take pictures. Go ahead. Um, We're here to stay. And then he was like, oh, I mean, I'm all for Black Lives Matter, but I'm not for a cop. And I'm like. If you understand, if you actually understood what Black Lives Matter, you would understand and appreciate ACAP too. So you really don't understand Black Lives Matter at the end of it. Um, Let me just throw this out there because ACAP was new to me when I heard the kids chanting it. I didn't know what it was. Um, So explain to us because a lot of the listeners may not know ACAP. What is that? And it's graffitied on the wall here. Right. So it basically means um, all cops are bad. Um, And the reason it's not 
to personally victimize the police officers. It's actually to attack the institutional racism that is been like within the police department in itself. Um, it's and the fact is is these police officers take it to heart when in reality we are not attacking them. We are attacking the system. We are attacking the institution. We are attacking the powers. So when they take it very personal, it's like, hey, it's not about you. It's about the institution that you represent. <laughs> If you know what it meant, it ain't pretty, it's bloody It overturns things, mushroom Hiroshima, the poison mushroom Nagasaki Not a thing can be done to forget The poison mushroom cloud Changed everything around From the 21st century, 50 years ahead of the time The first sign of Radioactive contamination is a distinct change in the frequency and nature of the concord. What in the world is revolution? Once it was a president, he was an actor. You think that that could be a factor in the fact of the act to betray the spoken word? Your trust and belief in your mother tongue. Dime, qual es la lingua mantea? You wouldn't use that word. The mother tongue, it cooks the books, it spins the winds, it plays for keeps. Stop, yeah, so many stops. Ride around in jeeps, go to the store and on. The real thing in the sky Guerrilla warfare And you can play it like a game With a famous name on the inside label Ain't no such thing As a third word You wouldn't use that word If you knew what it meant It ain't free It's bloody It overturns What in the world is Welcome back, everyone. This is Full Circle on 94.1 KPFA and KPFA.org. I am your host tonight, Freeball and Franklin. And that song you just heard was Dropping Revolution by Seikau Sundiata. And tonight we are talking about the six forced to strike. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram at the six, the number six, forced to, that's the number two, strike. The six forced to strike. And before the break, we heard about why they are doing this and some of the experiences they have had out there protesting. But the eggs and the police coming out weren't the only things to happen. On the evening of day three, a man came and gave an ominous warning to the strikers. Let's hear the tape. It's a little muffled, but you can make it out. Listen closely. But here's what I'm going to tell you. We got some woke, really pissed off. These people aren't the nicest people. Why don't I come see you about 3 in the morning? When you call the police, they're not going to do a whole bunch. And for your own safety, this is going nowhere. 
got a chance, you're gonna get messed up. That's always so. By messed up, do you mean like beat up, shot up? Not shot, but probably little of both. Tell them to bring it. A little of both. Tell them to bring it, baby. Tell them to bring it. They're big, big. Tell them to bring it. So big men are coming in the middle of the night to beat up some little girls. Don't go. Men and women. Said big, big guys. So that's why I said that. And women. Tell them to come on. Okay. So those were some of the threats made to the hunger strikers. This man says that big men and some women were coming in the middle of the night to, quote, mess us up. Now, let's go back to the scene outside the Antioch Police Department, now on day five of the hunger strike, and hear what the young strikers thought of this threat. Um, Tell us about the threat of violence last night. What was that like to be out there? to think that some men and some women might come to quote unquote mess you up real bad. What was that like to be out here and to live through that through the night? Yeah, so the threat that we got, um, it was very unnerving. Um, When the first gentleman came up to us, it was nerve wracking. Um, We didn't take it as a serious threat at that point, but when the second man came up to us to confirm the situation, it was definitely a little bit more um, scary there for us. Um, and I mean, going throughout the night, it's exhausting being out here hungry and just having that mental capacity drained from us from somebody threatening our lives. We were threatened to be kidnapped, um, shot up, beat up everything under the sun um it was really scary uh i didn't know if i would be able to call my mom in the morning i didn't know if i would be able to actually see the next day so i do appreciate everybody who came out to protect us throughout the night um we had a great turnout and that was really nice to at least give us a peace of mind that we have a sense of community here in antioch And then about today with the experience with the police, they came out and basically washed away uh, the Black Lives Matter symbol. You know, we were all kind of standing around. There was a group of officers and then a couple city workers. And then they just proceeded to just wash away the the art. Um, What was that like? Just kind of witness the the removal of Black Lives Matter. So the first day we were out here when we actually put up the Black Lives Matter chalk art Um, the officers said they were perfectly fine with it being there. Me being an African-American woman, um, it was very disappointing seeing that um, Antioch Police Department just does not care about their citizens once again. They care about the property. They care about things looking beautiful, even though it was a beautiful statement written on the side of their steps. Um, We made sure not to deface their property as far as the building is concerned. But just seeing that they just don't care about our lives and they just care about the money that gets put into this department. So, yeah. That was uh, Michelle, one of the hunger strikers. And let me um, pass over to McKenna and she's going to talk about um, how you felt last night having to sleep out here or try to rest with the threats of violence. And also uh, on top of all that, um, you're on day five of not eating. So how are you, um, how is your physical and mental state, you know, from not eating? Hi, thank you for having us on first off. Um, My name is McKenna. I'm 24 years old. I'm a community member. I've grown up in the East Bay and these have been issues I've felt very strongly about for a long time. I think what we're seeing is how deeply rooted systems of abuse are in our uh, in our government, in our in our communities, in um, in kind of like the public organizations that we're a part of, or that that exist in our communities, like the government and the police departments, and how often they will prioritize profit over the well-being of people. How they don't come out to see if we're doing okay, but they come out to make sure we're using chalk on the sidewalk. And um, it's been very frustrating. And the threats that we've been getting have been also very frustrating as we are doing a hunger strike, which is one of the most peaceful forms of protest you could possibly do, and yet people feel the need to uh, enact violence by throwing eggs or uh, verbally threaten us. One man was uh, sexually harassing me, and 
it's just very frustrating to see that. But I, on the other side, I did feel very comforted the fact that the community really did show up. And throughout the last five days, we've seen that every single day, community members coming up to us, how can we help? Um, we appreciate what you're doing. So there are some negatives, but I think overall, I've loved this experience because of the fact I've gotten to speak to so many community members and talk to them and create a sense of unity and this strength and this um, closeness with other people who feel the same way and who are frustrated and they're hurt and who want healing to occur in our in our communities. So that's been really uplifting. Um, yeah, I'm doing all right. The smoke is getting to us, but um, it's definitely um, encouraging. Like the energy everybody's bringing to us and the support is definitely what's keeping all of us going because it's, at the end of the day, this is for the community, the betterment of the community and the safety of the community. So that's what I'm seeing and that's what's keeping me going. Um, yes, Dennis, the, uh, the smoke here today has become very serious. Um, early this morning, people had delivered N95 masks to the protesters because they're outdoors here. Um, they spent a little time in a community space. Um, sometimes they sit in their cars with the air conditioner on. Um, but we're on our third day of 100 plus temperature, um, bad air quality. And today it's unhealthy and probably dangerous air quality out here. You can barely see um, a few blocks basically. And um, the skies are so dark and hazy. What we want to talk about is they're um, leading up to um, an event this weekend, and we don't want to uh, forget about that. And um, that would be Saturday out here. So up next, I'm here with Maria. She could tell us a little bit about herself and then what's going to be happening on Saturday. My name is Maria. Um, I'm with Barria Grassroots. For Saturday, we basically we have a march planned with a couple different organizations. Um, without, with, throughout California, we have Juice with Sacramento, Impact, East Bay Resistance, Together We Stand, JAR, Justice Advocates and Resources. Um, we're all coming together to basically have a march um, Saturday the 12th at 4 p.m. It's going to start at Antioch City Park. That's 10th and A Street. And we're going to march through the town and the community and basically just let it be known that the racism and hate in this town and police brutality is just quite enough and we really want to get our voices heard and amplified since the city officials in this town continue to ignore every action that we have and so we're really looking forward to that and hoping that this week has built up you know some kind of empathy for the people of this town and realizing and it shows like frank said the actions they came out here today and their biggest concern was washing off the chalk rather than anyone addressing you know really what's going on so we're really hoping that the community can come out and continue to support especially on the march as well welcome back to full circle on 94.1 kpfa and kpfa.org those were the voices of some of the six forced to strike the hunger strikers as they are known they are the hunger strikers outside the Antioch Police Department as we speak. And that was recorded on day five of their hunger strike. And they were describing what it was like to be sleeping out there under the threat of a violent attack by local vigilantes. Needless to say, the attack never materialized. Coming up next, we'll get a final update from the Occupy camp and the strikers. We will learn the new strategy they're going to employ. This comes after the Antioch City Council meeting where the strikers were barely acknowledged and a refusal by the mayor to call a special meeting to discuss the strikers' demands. Also leading to the new strategy was the statement by Police Chief Tammany Brooks that he will not fire an officer at the demands of others. Check this out. Yeah, so uh, today is day six, and last night was a city council meeting. Um, there were over 100 comments. Um, almost all of them, except for one, were in support of what we're doing out here, talking about our demands, talking about the ways that the city council and mayor need to address those demands. Um, and as expected, uh, they were completely dismissed. And it's really unfortunate because... We had city council members actually out here talking to us about our demands, and we had brainstormed ways that 
they legally could have the power to make sure that these demands were met because we understand that city council or the mayor um, don't control everything and no one entity is is responsible for for the things that we're talking about and we put that in our um, in our demands and in our press release so we were talking to them about how they could help us meet those demands and really what we wanted was for them to share our sense of urgency and share our concern about the things that we're talking about a simple yes these things are concerning what's going on um you know we saw what ILO said on social media do we have any update on that or the you know the investigation for Malone has taken a long time but honestly do we want to wait for that to even be complete is that even uh, a thorough investigation that will will determine our decision any kind of conversation um, about this and it wasn't an agenda item so we understood that their uh, their discussion about it was going to be limited however what they did say was completely dismissive of our demands and um, and we felt that that was um, just really disappointing because these are these are city council people that we voted in that we campaigned for that we um, know and love and respect and trust and we were really let down last night and it was made very obvious that even if we were to stay out here um, and starve to death that our deaths would not have any impact um, it would not bring about any change and so we had to re-strategize this morning um, especially considering some young folks, uh, most of them under 18 and students here in Antioch, actually went to uh, the mayor's office, his chiropractic office last night and tried to talk to him outside the building. Um, and he saw them, would not address them and literally ran inside and tried to lock the door instead of speak to them. So they went inside and they were knocking on the door of his office, um, you know, yelling basically, are you serious? You know, we're out here trying to talk to you. You're impossible to get a hold of. We call you, we email you, you don't respond, and now you're going to run away from us? They're frustrated, just like we are. And he posted on social media during the city council meeting saying that he was being held hostage in his office, which is a complete lie. And I think that it was intentional because he knows that that's going to bring violence for us out here. People in his name, on his behalf, immediately after that came down here and were already threatening us because they believe that we sent people to hold him hostage in his office. And I don't think that the mayor of a city as large and as diverse as Antioch should have the ability to lie on social media and then everybody just believed it. I mean, he posted a blurry photo that didn't show anything and everybody just believed it. And um, we're ready to incite violence on his behalf. And I think that that was his intention. Um, well, tell us now, since you're not getting the the response that you wanted, it's obvious the mayor, the chief, they're not going to meet your demands. What have you guys um, decided this morning that you're going to start doing now out here at the police department? So we all got together, um, the hunger strikers, our support team, and also the organizations that are supporting us across the nation. Um, and we had a meeting this morning and we said, you know, if our deaths would mean nothing and bring about no change, how should we re-strategize this? And we've decided to transition back into eating food, which will take a while because we haven't eaten any solid food in six days now. Um, and we are going to occupy this space and we are going to do something they'll care about because I think that, uh, you know, Mayor Wright specifically, the people who vote for him won't care if we sit out here and starve, but will they care if there's civil unrest in this city? If there's people occupying space in front of the police department, will they care if there's protests and marches in the streets? Will they care if activists from around the Bay Area come and support us? I think they will. And I think maybe once his voters are upset, then maybe he'll take some action. So that's how we've re-strategized. And you're calling for people to come down and set up camp and be part of the Occupy, which has now become Occupy, the Antioch Police Department? Absolutely. And if they remove us, we'll occupy any any public space that we can. That, Moving us from one street corner to the next is not going to make this go away. Um, you know, I, I know that they listen and, and try to figure out our strategy. We're not trying to do um, anything um, dangerous or violent, but, you know, we are very upset and we're not satisfied with the, the, the process that the city takes to get things done. We don't have the time to wait. So we are asking anyone across the Bay Area, Sacramento, whoever wants to come support the city of Antioch, that needs a real push for change, um, come down here, spend some time, support us, spend, I mean, put up a tent, 
bring up, pull up a chair, whatever it is that you want to do, we are inviting you here to join our movement because this is going to be a lot longer um, and a lot bigger than they were originally expecting. And all of this is kind of culminating in this weekend's activity, which is going to be a large march and rally held in the city of Antioch, which is going to start at the Antioch City Park at the corner of 10th and A Streets at 4 p.m. Saturday. And we're going to make our way through the city and then over here to the campsite. Talk about the importance of this march. So this march is really important because it's going to be historic for Antioch. Antioch has never seen any kind of collaboration or demonstration like this. Um, Organizations here locally have partnered with organizations from counties across the Bay Area to um, unite and come together for this event. Um, because I think people here think it's just a few individuals that feel this way and feel so passionately, but uh, we're ready to show them just how many people really do agree and do do feel the same. So we're going to have people coming out to support um, our movement in the little city of Antioch, and I really encourage everyone to come out because it's going to be a really moving um, historical event here, and this march is going to be really meaningful, um, and I'm excited to see it. And real quickly, we did have some threats of violence out here the other day when a man um, who's been kind of stalking uh, the campers and stopping for kind of weird, um, sometimes harassment type conversations. Um, Tell us about the threat that he gave a couple of days ago and what it led to in community support. Yes. So um, that man came by and told us that he had been in communication with um, essentially an alt-right vigilante militia group here in Antioch that was upset by our actions who planned to come here in the middle of the night um, and, quote, mess us up. And I asked, you know, does that mean beat us up? Does that mean shoot us up? And he said, oh, a little of both. And I said, okay, so you know this how? And he said, well, they told me, but, um, you know, I went and I told the the Antioch police and they laughed and they said they promised not to respond. So, you know, you guys better get out of here and I'll know that they've come once I see the ambulance and you're all on the ground. Um, And so it was actually confirmed by a second person who came by um, and said that there was actually a chat room where they were discussing what they were going to come do. They said uh, kidnapping, beating us up, shooting us were all discussed. Um, And what that led to was over 30 people coming out and watching over us as we slept during the night. And we were so moved and grateful for the community support that we saw. Um, People risking their safety and their lives to come out and stay up all night to just watch over us while we slept. Um, I can't tell you how amazing that was. And um, also, we've been putting out some chalk art on the walls. Talk about the moment that you had Black Lives Matter on the wall and then witnessing a group of officers come out with a city worker and basically erase that that statement off the wall. Would it make you feel like to see them basically hose away the Black Lives Matter? I mean... We know that black lives don't matter to the Antioch Police Department, and I can give you a list of names to attest to that um, of people of color that they have killed with no regard for their life or their families or their futures. Um, And then their subsequent defense of of those actions. So, you know, we're already aware that that black lives don't matter to the Antioch Police Department, but it was just, honestly, it was was somewhat comedy to watch them come out here and and spend time to wash off chalk and they came out here this morning to do it a second time they bring out a whole city team with a big truck full of water a pressure washer um to to wash off some chalk and it's not even on the walls of the police department it's a a retaining wall next to the stairs so i think that they just don't want it um shown to the street and uh if they want to spend time coming out here every day to pressure wash chalk with a whole city team and that's what they want to waste tax dollars doing then they can do that Okay, one last time, give us the importance and the details about what's coming up Saturday and how people could follow the strikers, the Occupy, and the um, where can they find information about the march on Saturday? Absolutely. So um, the march is called Dismantle White Supremacy in Antioch. It will start at 4 p.m. at City Park downtown. That's at the corner of 10th and A Streets. Um, So at 4 p.m., everyone will gather together and get ready to start the march. Um, And if you would like to follow, uh, that is actually an event on Facebook that you can find through the Six Forced Two Strike. So the number two um, 
uh, page on Facebook, and then we also have Instagram and Twitter. Um, so it's all going to be six forced to strike if you would like to follow along. All right, Lacey, thanks for speaking with us today on Hard Knock Radio, and we appreciate all that you're doing. Me being a resident of the city, I could say I appreciate you all being here, and you all have my full support. Thank you, Frank. Thanks for coming out. Joining us right now is somebody that's actively running um, Antioch City Council District 1, and she's been here numerous times to show her support for what's happening down here. And I'll just have you introduce yourself real quick. Tamisha Torres Walker, Antioch resident, and I am a candidate for District 1 here in Antioch. That's my district. I'm down here. And um, first of all, what's your um, sense of what you're seeing around you? The young kids are out here. They're on day five of a hunger strike. They got some clear demands that um, seem reasonable and at least a conversation with the city council, at least a conversation with the mayor. Uh, But that hasn't happened. How do you see things, um, you know, from what you've been watching out here? I would have to say that this is not an overnight thing. This didn't happen overnight. These young people have been organizing hundreds of people to submit comments to the city council around, you know, police accountability and misconduct. Maybe it feels like over the last two, maybe three months, and it's just been building up to this um, uh, right here because... They just don't feel heard. And I think that it's unfortunate um, that they that their voices have not been heard and that it had to result to, you know, six young people exercising their right to peacefully protest by denying themselves nourishment to get the attention of elected leaders who should really be raising up their voice. And we could see that they've virtually been ignored. And you're kind of familiar with what's been going on. And their number one demand is the immediate termination of Officer Malone um, for the killing of this man here on this poster next to us, Luis Congora, Pat. So the hiring process, um, he's in. They He skipped out on his discipline. You know, if you as a city council person, what do you think about the process and how um, Officer Malone was hired? Well, I think I think the thing that we need to follow is that that's just not local. Right. That happens almost everywhere. A bill just um, we just lost the opportunity to pass a bill at the state level to prevent that, to prevent officers from doing bad acts in one department and coming being hired at another department. Um, And I and the fact that that has happened here in Antioch, I'm pretty sure it's not the first time that it's happened. It's just that this family has never received justice and they're out there and they're keeping their family members name, you know, and likeness alive. And they're saying, no, you hired this guy to come and police this community and um, it's not safe. And he never was held accountable. I think um, we all have to be held accountable for our actions. I know I have. And um, so so that's what I think is going on. And not to mention, like, Stephen Aiello, the president of the police union, you know, making comments around slapping protesters. That is such reckless language. And, and because of the climate that we're in, the political, social, racial climate and a pandemic, a global pandemic, people... People are really acting on these words. Our president is using this language. And um, I don't want to see residents and young people get hurt for exercising their right to peacefully protest. And so that that's that's a challenge. And we need transparency in this city. Um, Our elected leaders need to be a lot more transparent with the community um, and listen to the community um, and take direction from the community. Yeah, they're they're They were elected to lead. But um, they need to lead alongside the community um, in most instances. And that's the voice of Tamisha Walker running for uh, District 1 Antioch City Council. How can people follow your campaign, Tamisha? Yeah, so if you want to follow my campaign, you can follow me on Facebook. Um, We have a campaign page, Tamisha Walker, for Antioch City Council District 1. You could also go to our website, um, um, Walker for the um, number 4, Antioch um, City Council D1. Um, dot com. You can also, if you really just want to talk, you can text me at 925-335-6738. I'm a community member like anybody else, and I'm down to have conversations about what we could do. I know if I was a council member right now, 
I will be demanding I will be demanding that we lead an investigation that will lead to the immediate termination of Maloney. I would also be requesting that um, Stephen Aiello step down from being the president. And I would also not I would be open and transparent about this bridge and the gap dialogue and make sure that people directly impacted and families by police brutality had a seat at the table. All right. Thank you very much, Tamisha. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Welcome back. You are listening to Full Circle on 94.1 KPFA and KPFA.org. That was the most recent update, and that was Lacey Brown of the Six Forced to Strike. That was recorded on the scene out front of the Antioch Police Department Wednesday afternoon. That last voice you heard was not a striker, but that was Tamisha Walker, a candidate for Antioch City Council District 1. Now, before we go, we want to give you the latest information on the situation in Antioch, and that is the inflammatory email and Facebook post put out by Antioch Mayor Sean Wright, in which he seemed to be calling to his supporters to come out and disrupt our protest. He also falsely stated that he was being held hostage by a group of protesters outside his place of business where he was online during the Zoom call city council meeting. I spoke with Sevgi Fernandez of Together We Stand, one of the main organizers of the march and rally taking place in Antioch tomorrow afternoon. Sevgi Fernandez, we don't have a lot of time tonight, but can you talk about the importance of this march and rally coming up tomorrow in Antioch, especially in light of the inflammatory email that Mayor Sean Wright has sent out to his personal constituents in a private email? Well, thanks for having me, Franklin. Um, I cannot express enough how important it is that we get people out on Saturday to support not only the six folks who've been out there all week hunger striking and occupying uh, Antioch Police Department, but for the community as a whole. We chose to go into Antioch as our next rally because of the major issues with uh, historic racism in that county and in that city and within the police department and their history of police brutality and their recent hiring of Officer Maloney. He's gone back and forth through several police departments in the Bay Area over the years, but he was instrumental in killing Uh, somebody in San Francisco and literally uh, resigned the day before he would have faced an internal investigation and and potentially accountability under the new district attorney. Uh, And now he's in Antioch and we have heard that there have been uh, instances of excessive force by him since then. So We have a police department and a city that has historically treated people of color uh, poorly. And it's just essential, especially at the point we are in history right now, that people get out there and take a stand. I know COVID's going on, we've got the fires, but we're fighting for people's lives here. And uh, we have a mayor who is rather than simply having a dialogue with these young people, which is all they've asked for, is let's sit down and have a dialogue about our demands and our concerns. These are his constituents. Rather than do that, he posted something on Facebook the other night during the city council meeting saying he's being held hostage and he's scared He's using these inflammatory words to try to incite fear and violence towards the the young people that have been literally putting their lives on the line out there to try to make change. The fact that it's had to get to such levels in order to try to be heard says a whole lot about how he's running that city and a lot about that city council. Um, and then he sent out an email a private email to all of his supporters basically saying Antioch has had enough of this chaos. I'm quoting, 
it's time that we stand up and take our community back. Email me here and let me know if you'll join me. And so, Sebgi, let me interrupt. So when you hear those words, take our city back, what does that mean to you? And what does it sound like that he's trying to do? That sounds like he is rounding up the white folks, the conservatives, and they want to get Black Lives Matter and anything to do with addressing racism, discrimination, police brutality out of their city. He's rounding up his folks, his good old boys. And that's unfortunate that he feels that's acceptable. You know, Franklin, you've been at several of the marches that we've put together, and there's always been some concern of counter protesters and violence, but we have always gone in peaceful with a message of uh, unity and love and uh, empowering black lives. And uh, for him to take to social media and rile all these people up who have by the way, been calling and threatening me and my organization since he did that. And, you know, that we know that people have been driving by and threatening physical violence and harassing uh, the sixth force to strike. You know, for him to do that is not in any way what a leader who wants to preserve safety uh, within his community should do. It's just the antithesis of that, if I'm being honest he's literally drumming up um in some vigilantes to come out and you know push us out of the city is what it sounds like and we've certainly heard people saying that that's what they plan to do all right all right Sebgi. we don't have a lot of time but i appreciate you coming on tonight and just a reminder that the march and rally will be held at the antioch city park at the corner of 10th and a street that's tomorrow saturday september 12th 4 p.m at the antioch city park and then we'll be marching through the city to the antioch police department to join the encampment where the six forced to strike have set up their occupy camp Sebgi, we look forward to seeing you out in antioch and we uh, appreciate all the work you're doing to help us organize hey i appreciate you guys and and i look forward to seeing everybody on saturday thanks for having me frank thank you <laughs> And that brings us to the end of tonight's show. Remember, we will have links to all the organizations involved with the six forced to strike and all the details on the march and rally in Antioch on our website, kpfaapprentice.org. And that'll be up just after the show. Our executive producer is Miss M. Our technical director is myself, Freewell and Franklin. I have also been your host tonight. Joy Moore is our production consultant. A special shout out to all the organizations involved in this protest. That includes JAR, Justice Advocates and Resources, Bay Area Grassroots, Juice, Impact, East Bay Resistance, and of course, Together We Stand. That's it for me tonight, Free Will and Franklin. To everyone out there, please protect your health and your humanity. And I'll see you on the streets. Stay tuned. Up next is La Onda Bajita. Peace. Hi, this is David Talbot, author of Season of the Witch and the Devil's Chessboard. In these days when news and culture are so formatted and corporatized, I rely on KPFA more and more. Shows like Flashpoints, Project Censor, Democracy Now!, and for fun, Dirk Richardson's Here and Now. They keep me going, and I know they keep you going too. So please join me in supporting KPFA. It's an essential community resource. Thank you. Hi, this is Nomi Prince. As everyone knows, we live in a world in which it gets harder and harder each day to wade through the seemingly endless stream of lies. That's why now, more than ever, it's crucial for brave and objective media like KPFA to thrive. Public radio serves the public, period. 
So please consider donating whatever you can today to help KPFA remain a beacon of truth. Donate today at kpfa.org. After months of precautions, lockdowns, and social distancing, the coronavirus cases and hospitalizations continue to spike in the Bay Area. In times like these, it's KPFA's communal duty to remind our listeners to remain cautious and stay vigilant about wearing masks, hand washing, and social distancing. We all want to return to normal, but first, we have to remain alive. Be safe, be smart, be well, and thanks for listening to KPFA. You're listening to 94.1 KPFA, 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF in Fresno, 97.5 K248BR in Santa Cruz, and online worldwide at kpfa.org.